Good morning, everyone. I'm Lexis Green. Good morning, Coastal Ben, and thanks for joining us. Good morning, everyone. I'm Lexis Green. It's 6 a.m. on this Saturday, August 27th. Let's get a quick check of the weather with Mariah Gallegos. Welcome back, Mariah. Thanks, Carly. Some Coastal Ben parents who are still looking for clothing can find savings if they know how to shop. Experts say to hold off on getting a full new wardrobe, clothes tend to go on clearance right after Labor Day. A new expansion decades in the making is set to debut today at the Texas State Aquarium. The Port of Corpus Christi Center for Wildlife Rescue is a $14 million venture that can house up to 4,000 injured sea turtles. This morning, shrimpers are going to be out in full force now that state and federal waters in the Gulf are open for the commercial shrimping season. A student from Minger Elementary got an unusual ride to class. You know what they say, it's all about making a big entrance, right? We'll take a look at this. What's your name? Zach. Nice to meet you, Zach. It's part of a bond program that's already seen significant work either started or set to begin. Then again, there's so much work going on, you <laughs> probably wouldn't even notice yeah. the difference. Three News anchor Mike Gillespie shows us the multi-million dollar move to improve Commodore Park. Thank you for joining us. We are following breaking news this morning. Over on Pennyway, a juvenile boy was found on the ground by a neighbor. Details are limited at this time, but Corpus Christi police say that the boy was injured. At this time, it is unclear how and what injuries he sustained, but officers encourage anyone with information to call the police. And we will continue to follow the story as more details become available. Carly, we are following breaking news into our studios. One person is dead following a crash off SBID in Flower Bluff. That's right. Details are still limited at this hour. It's 7:26 a.m. on this Friday. We are continuing to follow breaking news. If you're traveling on northbound lanes of I-37 and I-69, those roads are expected to be closed for several hours. The country is reacting to the FDA's landmark decision approving the over-the-counter sale of the O-pill oral contraceptive. Currently, the once-a-day hormonal birth control pill is prescription only. However, with the FDA sign-off, it will soon be not even a requirement as much to visit a doctor. A teacher's aide from Rockport Fulton ISD is out of a job after being charged with having an inappropriate relationship with a student. Police were notified of the relationship between Amy Elizabeth Cross and the student. Detectives say that Cross was taken into custody for possession of drugs after authorities found both a small quality of cocaine and marijuana inside of her home. She later allegedly admitted to interacting with a schoolboy that led investigators to seek additional warrants, leading to charges of sexual assault to a child, an improper relationship between an educator and a student. Cross remains in jail this morning. A Corpus Christi man faces life in prison after pleading guilty to selling pills laced with fentanyl that killed one person. The United States Attorney's Office says that 21 year old Ricardo Julian Rios was indicted in March. After two days of searching, the body of Athena Strand, the missing seven year old at the center of an Amber Alert, has been found. Social media app TikTok is helping to boost one state veterans project. We turned to our sister station in Dallas to see how a 90 second TikTok video went viral and then turned a veteran from Arlington into a best selling author. And enjoy and avoid the pinch. <laughs> I, know, I have I said, green Kristen, pants. Speaking of, no, 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 I got green pants. I got green pants <laughs> on. I promise. Green job, Thomas. We live in the London ISD area. Expect to see more traffic in the area in just a couple of hours <laughs> as students return to the classroom. Be sure to follow those school zones, speed zones, that is, this morning. That's right, John Thomas. In our next hour, we'll be live with Dr. Judy Wittes, the superintendent of the district, on what parents and neighbors can expect as school gets back into session. Good morning and welcome back. The USS Lexington Museum is getting ready to celebrate its 80th anniversary. Steve Banda joins us live from the USS Lexington. Good morning, Steve. Now, earlier you were mentioning to Mike that it's kind of like morning. its 80th birthday. Kind of walk us through that. It, wow. seems, it seems so simple. Just no new things, but you know how hard that is? It is very <laughs> hard. I, just reading that, I thought to myself, I need something. do that. <laughs> I need something right now. Kicking off with a bang. I mean, look around us. There's at least 14,000 people here. Hashtag finally. So let's go ahead and Get into the spirit of the weekend and let's take a look at what people are saying on social media. Join Lexus Green for Rescue Tales Sunday and Monday mornings right here. Good morning, Coastal Ben. We're here with our friends at the Gulf Coast Humane Society. With me is Jackie and in my arms, she's going to have to steal this away from me. Who do we have here? This is Amelia. She's a two-month-old Belgian Malinois puppy. 
Thanks, Mike. Now, it is definitely a different scene out here on the island right now. The sun's come out. There's not much need for this rain jacket. But as you can tell, there is still some of that sitting water out here in the medians. Some of those threats to our coastal waters include a high risk of rip currents, extremely rough waves that can get as high as 8 to 12 feet, and coastal flooding. I know last year I said I wouldn't get back in this pit, but here I am again. An actual simulation involving an active shooter. This scenario is just like, like you're in church. Something. And let's just say it's not as quick as reaction as you might think. Back to school, but here's a reminder of how violating these white lines can land you some major fines. Daniel Herman Jr. is just your average 20-something year old. He's also a recent graduate who is taking some time to skate across America. I started in Miami, Florida, and I'm longboarding all the way to San Francisco. Herman, who is 1,700 miles into his journey, landed in the key city Thursday with 3,000 more miles left to go. Herman's journey isn't just to pass the time, rather a spiritual journey one he hopes will lead him down the right path. A lot of times I'll pray about the route that I'm supposed to take. Prayer and stamina with him on this ride. I just felt like I should go out and see more of the world. I love talking with people and just hearing their stories as well. Although he has met people he will never forget along the way, he has also lost. One of my uh, friends who had walked across the United States with this vest actually passed away. As I've been on the trip, he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. So I'm also doing this trip to remember Trevor Heinrich because um, he was a good friend of mine. With nothing but a backpack, water bottle, and his board, Herman hopes to inspire others to be a free spirit because Robert Frost said it best. Two roads diverge in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. Don't waste your life on social media watching everybody else's. Go out there and experience this world yourself. Find whatever it is you're passionate about and just pursue it with everything you got. And that has made all the difference. With gas prices as high as they are and only expected to continue climbing, people are putting down the fuel pump and picking up the charging cable. Right, a lot of people are coming in because because of the cost of fuel and we're getting five to six dollars for, for a gallon of gas. Mike Terraz is general sales manager for BMW of Corpus Christi, has been in the business of cars for over 20 years and says the demand for electric cars is going up. In the next five years, we're actually going to see over 50 percent of our inventory being electrical or battery or hybrid powered and that's just going to be what's going on in the future. With more cars plugging in, does this mean more pressure on our electricity grid? We spoke to an expert at the Energy Institute of UT Austin. You could turn over the entire fleet of vehicles, that's cars and trucks here in Texas tonight, and we would be able to plug them in. According to Conkleman, it would be about a 30% more demand over the course of the day on a high capacity, high demand day. But Cockleman says what we don't want to do is everyone charge their cars at the same time. As long as we shift on those summer afternoons that charging to the nighttime, or the morning, or even the midday when sun is providing so much electricity to the Texas grid will be fine. Cockleman says electric car drivers spent one-tenth a mile traveled compared to those who are buying gas for diesel pay. And as for charging time, it depends on the driver's destination. And I have friends who plug in every day, much like they do with their cell phones, but I only plug in once a week. We reached out to ERCOT for a statement and they said the following. ERCOT continues to monitor and plan for the growth of electric vehicles in our long-term system assessment reports, but at this time, the loads from EVs are not significant enough to have an impact on the grid. Lexus Screen, 3 News.